Welcome to the Marvel Sports Worldwide Podcast, where we discuss and analyze your favorite Marvel sports. From JMR Marble League to all go-do tournaments, we'll make sure you never miss the action. All Marble Sports, all the time, right here on the MSW Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Marvel Sports Worldwide Podcast. My name is Brendan. And I'm Commander Wolf. And today, or the last day for me, has been a very, very hot day, because my air conditioning broke, unfortunately. Oh. Or my family's air conditioning, my house's air conditioning kind of broke. And, uh, yeah, it, was, it got real hot real quick in the house. Um, you know, don't take air conditioning for granted, because it is, it is tough to to live without something to cool you down it got shot up from like 60 to 8 69 to like 84 in like 20 minutes not 20 minutes but you know you get the idea like two hours but it was uh it was rough sleeping last night was rough with the heat um and today was rough with the heat but it's fixed and it's blowing that nice cool air so i am back rolling along again you know <laughs> yep so, uh, well, we got a, a whole lot to cover. There is so much that has happened. So uh, let's just go ahead and head to the news so we can get this rolling. All right. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the news. <laughs> Sports fans, I am Johnny Marvel, and as always, I am bringing you the news for MSW, and we have a lot of it. First, let's dive in and discuss the events of last Marvel Standing, Marbula Moo. The race was intense, as the competitors would fight for placements back and forth. The most surprising moment of all was when the Simis Gamers fell way behind, as it appeared to be then for them. But, they managed to beat the odds and fight their way, ending in fourth. And the final standings for the event are Team Purity in first, Grays of Glory in second, and Milky Madness in third. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the winner of last Marvel standing is Grays of Glory! With Team Purity in a close second, and due to their incredible recovery in Marvel Mu, the Semi Skinners were able to claim third. Congratulations to these incredible teams, and as one competition ends, another begins. Marvel League 2020 has finally arrived, and there's a lot to talk about. First up are the qualifiers. While all the teams are incredibly skilled, only 12 can move on. And after four events, the teams to be left behind are the following. Team Primary, the Jungle Jumpers, the Snowballs, the Chocolatiers, the Indigo Stars, the Jawbreakers, the Rojo Rollers, and the Pinkies. It's a shame we won't be able to see them compete, but... We do look forward to seeing them in Showdown later this year. Now that we know who's moving on, we can move on to the first event, Balancing. These are perhaps the most shocking performances we've ever seen from Balancing, with veteran teams such as the Savage Speeders, Team Galactic, and Mellow Yellow doing very poorly. In particular, none of the Mellow Yellow's marbles managed to even make it past the 50 mark, making it the second worst balancing performance to date with the Jungle Jumper's performance from 2019 being only two points lower. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the Minty Maniacs, who had come out of retirement for the Marble League, as they dominated the competition, resulting in the first ever Marble League gold medal. Last year's champs, the Raspberry Racers, took second and were closely followed by the Midnight Wisps in third. This Marble League is shaping up to be the most unpredictable yet, and we, me Johnny Marble too, cannot wait to see more. Finally, we have the premiere of Glass Car with Race 1, Circuit 1 of the Sunstorm Grand Prix. 
The race was intense as the Marvel showcased speed like we have never seen before, thanks to the new propulsion system. It was a fast and exciting 20 laps, but in the end, Nitro took first, followed by Rattlesnake in second, and Rock Slide in third. Glass Car is off to an incredible start, and we look forward to more of the fast, action-filled races to come. With everything going on, the Marvel Sports world is more action-packed than ever before. And guys, girls, it's only just getting started. But guys, I've been Johnny Marble. You have been the best fans in the world. Let's kick it back and continue on with the podcast. Thank you for listening. All right, guys, welcome back from the news. Thank you, Johnny Marvel, for bringing us the ton of news that we have this week with all the Marvel sports flowing in to our lives like a river that bursted through its banks. Um, really, though, there has been all the Marvel sports like happened now. All right, we had yeah, nothing everything. for a week. Well, weeks, actually. And then Glasscar shoots in. We get the end of the Cravendale milk marble thing. Um, then we get the, the qualifiers for Marble League 2020, followed by the friendly round, and JMR's like, is that not enough marbles? Fine. Take the first event of Marble League 2020 as mm -hmm. well. And it certainly was an exciting, all of the videos were awesome to watch. Awesome to watch like usual. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, the Marble League especially, and the, uh, the first event of Glass Car as well. But today, we're going to be talking about all those things, but we have a guest on today. He's from Latvia, if I, if I read his name correctly, and he also is up at 4 a.m. right now in the morning. So, Steve, why don't you say hi to everybody? Oh, hey, everyone. I'm happy to be on the show once again. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have you back. Yeah, it's uh, great yeah. to have you back. Um, yeah. You know, must try to make be... that extra commitment. Yeah. Try to make that extra commitment to make, make myself up at 4 a.m. I have my can of Red Bull right next to me, so I don't fall. Oh asleep. my God, dude! Yeah, hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're a Marble Trooper, man. That's uh, that's ridiculous, but it's yeah. it's yeah. loyalty to the Marble Sports cause. Yeah, and plus I have a um that cup of uh, sorry can of Pepsi as well for an extra kick if if the Red Bull doesn't work. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, if the wings, if it doesn't give you wings, you know, Pepsi's your next best bet. I have a can of Dr. Pepper here, too. <laughs> exactly. All right. We have a lot of discuss, so let's get started. So, wait, yeah, Steve, I'm ready um, to I do want to know, do you, have you watched uh, Fubica and Glasscar, or did you only watch um, JMR? I uh, just watched JMR, but I, but I think I, my, I, I think I might watch today the, the Glasscar today. All right, then I think that because you've only seen JMR, what we'll do is we'll talk about JMR and all the stuff with that first, then go to the uh, trivia segment, and then come back, and uh, me and Waffle will talk about Glass Car, and you can kind of pipe in with questions and stuff. You could be like a fan trying to learn about it all, um, because we want to, of course, uh, focus on the things that you um, you indeed have seen. So, uh, yeah, I think we should jump into it. There are so many things to cover this week with JMR. So, I mean, let's try to let's try to start from the beginning. Um, I think we should start with the end of the Cravendale Cup um, and Marbula yes. Moo, which it just, that's just uh, come on, that's it's funny actually. Um, yeah, it that's was. great. So, what yeah. do you guys think about that? Did you like the ending? Did you like the whole series? <laughs> do you want to see I... Cravendale Cup again or something like it? Or what do you think? Um, yeah, definitely. It was it was actually more entertaining than I expected expected to be. Plus the mm -hmm. ending of all ending of the uh, which which was the team which who won um what what team won that uh, cup I forgot actually uh, it was uh, Grace, Grace of Glory, glory. Yeah. yeah they Grace took of... home all the glory yeah <laughs> Grace of Glory the way they won jumped at him in the <laughs> milk pool and then followed and then the, and the king and queen oh, the milk pool. The, yeah that was absolutely awesome. one of the best endings I've seen. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> it was so silly, though. I loved how they're in the milk pool, and then you have the animation of the marble, the one marble coming up behind the Duke and the Duchess of Milk or whatever, and then pushing them in. It's, that, that was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, it, it was security guards. Like, the uh, security just, guard just pushed the royalty into he, a pool of and milk. And then he, he jumps in. They're just all in this pool of milk. <laughs> I, have you know? some, I have a feeling someone's getting fired later. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
No, I think they'll probably take it. Uh, they'll take it well. You know, they were just just all in the spirit of being fresh and yeah. and pure. You know, lasting the longest. Um, I will say though, um, I I did enjoy the Cravendale Cup first of all. Kind of wet your appetite for some of the events you're going to see in the Marble League, and I think that it was interesting right. to kind of see um, a kind of tournament that where you saw Marble League style events, but not just the same teams. Even though I love those teams, you know something something a little different. Um, you know, I will say that I still do fail to understand the whole last marble standing name that was given. When I heard yeah. last marble standing, yeah, I, w- I was thinking at some point they were going to start cutting teams off. It was going to be like a voted off the island or, you know, person in last team in last place doesn't get to come to the next event. Yeah. And I thought it would be some kind of battle royale of teams, but they did not really bring that aspect to it. And for something as insignificant compared to marble league as just like the milk advertising tournament um which is pretty much what it was <laughs> um i just thought they could have experimented with something new like that something that kind of adds you know ad- added a different style of play so i mean or just not call it last marble standing to begin with because i think it kind of was misleading because i was definitely expecting something new in that in that sense and they didn't go ahead with it yeah i have to admit like the name was still very confusing and I, I wondered if maybe they planned on something but they didn't have time to do more and you know if that's the case like it's whatever i'm personally like the, the marbula moo was still a very fun event to watch um mm. what what surprised me the most was like how uh the semi skimmers like they went they were so far behind and then like they managed to pull, to pull themselves together and made it all the way to fourth and that saved them like that's what got them on the podium for the overall yeah. if they had um been one place lower they would have tied and if they had been uh in last place again they would have been fourth so it was it was truly a make it or break it moment and like i was just so surprised with how well they did like at that last second it was very like it was very engaging and a lot of fun to watch yeah yeah and unpredictable yes. as well yeah i could say exactly the same on so i really did thought uh, this is gonna be like you know one this after second event, last team gets cut, and then so on. They got and it's, and it keeps going. So that there are only two teams left in the very last event. But but uh, I I actually will end up running for the fresh and freshers, but which I actually like to call the just limers in disguise because I <laughs> because I have a feeling they were just limers with different names because they just. Were so bad. They had only one wow. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> but hey, just... I love my limers. <laughs> but yeah, they only have one good performance in collision, but the rest of the day were just really bad. Just, <laughs> I feel so bad for them, honestly. But yeah, I think that cu- I think that Kramer's El Cup was actually a really good experiment, and I'd love to see them next year as well. No, yeah, I, I thought. Um... I just thought it was it was done well, um, but and I really actually enjoyed the layout of the final track in event six. I just thought it was it, if you if you watched uh, Team Purity and uh, Grays of Glory, the the changing of places were so frequent, and these with these very unexpected bursts of speed from each of the respective marbles was so like often actually. Um, there were just so many times where just Grays of Glory would be in front a little bit, and then Team Priority out of nowhere, speed, and then the other way around as well. And I thought that the way the track was designed, it allowed for that sort of just random speed to really come out of nowhere just based on how you went around the certain curves or, you know, approached certain parts of the track or how they shot out of the elevator. Um, and I just think, like, it really did create that that battle between those two marbles because of the because of the track so i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed how there were a lot of straights in that track um so it wasn't just this like you know like the one track from maybe the one what was the name of it the one that had all the curves maybe it was greenstone i forget but the, like, I think it was greenstone yeah yeah, greenstone. yeah. It was not like that it was like because it was less marbles it was very smart to go with um, a bunch of straight pieces to really allow the speed to unfold and the actual mm-hmm. battle between the marbles to, to occur. So I really enjoyed that um, in general. I think the event was 50% absolutely an advertising ploy, obviously. But I think it was it was good to watch. It, you know, I, I, I uh, got into it more because at the beginning I was like, okay, I'm going to choose a team to root for. I went with Team Pur- Purity and Milky Madness. Team Purity did well, got second, Milky Madness. 
Um, they got distracted, I, I guess. <laughs> but um, it was good. It was good because I picked this team and I was able to follow it, and the events were done pretty well, so I didn't mind. Yeah, um, I think like uh, I'm not sure how I feel about like if they like Marvel, uh, or I guess uh, last Marvel standing coming back, like, cause I mean like, it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't um interesting or entertaining to watch. It's just that like I feel like it's like there was there like it means it's like too much, it's just too much JMR, you know, like ex- especially since like it, a lot of it's probably gonna be um the same events that are gonna occur in. The Marble League, so yeah, it's like it's basically we're getting like double doses of everything. And like, dude, I swear to God, I've seen balancing so many times at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got that in um, uh, Craven Dome Cup milk. Um, I just throw milk in there because it's all about milk. And then we got it in the qualifiers, and then they hit us back with balancing for the first event in the Marble League. That I am good on balancing. All right, I am good on balancing. <laughs> I I, they, I get it. The marbles can balance. Uh, some of them not so much. I mean, the mellow yellow, jeez. But yeah, oh, um, we'll get right, to we'll that. We'll have plenty to talk about that. We'll have yeah. plenty of time to talk about that. But yeah, that's enough balancing for now. I'm really excited about the half pipe being event two. We haven't seen the half pipe pipe in a while. I'm hoping it's going to be done even better than before. But uh, yeah, they they um, they could have made it better. I think for the whole milk thing, they could have made it better. They just didn't. All right, I would have I would have gone some sort of battle royale type thing where you get kind of cut down each event or something maybe maybe had some different types of events i don't know maybe something more crazy like some marble bowling or something like that because like you know what i'm saying something something a little bit more out there since you know this is not the classic marble league where you expect the classics maybe actually go out on a limb and that's something that i think jmr the one thing with jmr you're never gonna see i don't think you're ever gonna see bowling i really don't i really think they're never going to do that kind of stuff on the channel and so you know it doesn't make them bad they fill a great niche and do a great job but i think that if you want marble bowling like that or you want some like crazy marble golf thing which i also think would be amazing i mean marbles are pretty much golf balls just a little bit smaller you know what i'm saying um in essence you know they it would be really cool to have some sort of marble golf event you know you there's some wacky events like that um some like ones you know where you, where you incorporate some targets and points that you're not gonna see that stuff on jmr all right, and and like um, soccer as well. Um, you did have the hockey event that one year; it was decent. But like you know, did they do football? Did they do football one time? Am I, or am I mistaken? Football? No. You mean like football? American football? Like American, American football? Fo- no, they never did American football. No, That'd be no, ridiculous. No. I could have. Okay, I, I must be mistaken then. I, I'm even thinking of Fubeka at one point. No, but like I'm just saying that I think um, you're not going to see that kind of stuff from JMR. So. But, hey, you know, it leaves it open for uh, for other channels to do that. But I, I just think it would be cool for that kind of stretch, you know, to get a little more creative in that world. So, um, But, yeah, I think uh, that's enough of the Craven Dome. We've really been dwelling on that a lot. But uh, now we get some actual really nice events coming out here. Yes. All right. And um, we should jump right. I know we want to get to the main event, but I think we really, really, really need to talk about the Marble League qualifiers because they were incredible. A lot All of right. interesting stuff in the qualifiers. Um, I, Team I, Momo made it in. I can't believe yes. that. Um, so I want to hear your... Mini Maniacs huh? made it in? Yeah, yeah Mini Maniacs. Bumblebees. Let's just and take a Bumblebees. moment. For Bumblebees as well. Uh, I hoo. Um, not happy about both of them making it through. But... Uh, yeah, didn't you, you said I I know you said like they were like probably not gonna make it just like you, you've had a very like big thing against the Hoovalino teams for quite a while. No, dude, I didn't think that we, we were gonna see both of them in. I think I said something about that. I did not think that we were gonna see both Hubalino teams in the Marble League this year. I'm not happy about it. I don't like the Hubalino teams. Uh, Mini Maniacs, I like a little bit more than the Bumblebees. Um, shout out to Miss Minty. I guess she really likes them. Um, and Mini Maniacs, they pulled through. You can't deny the balancing performance. But uh, yes, let, let's getting, cover those qualifiers really quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, first takes, actually, you guys, quick, go ahead. Real quick, before you get to the qualifiers, I'd like to announce that Jaylee's Marble Runs just got their gold, your gold YouTube plaque. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I saw that's that. Right, yeah, they did. It's, it's incredible. It's really cool. Yeah, how yeah. amazing is that? They were halfway to that goal two months ago. Now look at them. Yeah. 1.2 million subscribers about that is unbelievable okay so all right so what about the qualifiers 
Uh, I was v- very surprised by like a lot of the performances. Like, it was like like there were a lot of Marvel teams that were closed. Like to, like the bo- like every single one of, like the bottom teams below Momo, with the exception of last place, being, uh, all had really similar scores. So it was a very close fight for that those last two, like, two spots to qualify. And the ju- and one of the biggest parts of the qualifiers I, I remember seeing was the jungle jumpers obviously falling off in the funnel spin. Oh, but that also was in that rough. Sp- yeah. yeah, and then like yeah, and then but then like other thing that really surprised me was just Momo like like really like taking the lead there on the on the funnels like, and part of me wonder like if maybe it would be a record, but like since there's more, there, this is a different type of funnel spin. I don't think there's any sort of record for like funnel spin times, which is a shame. Like because I feel like Momo would have been a, actually a decent contender for that record. No, how yeah, well they did. They did very well. I was very surprised. I thought there were. I thought it was a ball bearing up there at first because I was like Momo really. Um, I was just very surprised at Momo the whole time. I mean, they really sucked on the balancing, but the all the other events, they did a pretty good job, and they just held through to get a spot, and then they come out in the balancing itself and perform really well. So, I mean, um, Momo certainly was a big surprise for me. Um, four, my four teams, my four fave teams, you could say, all made it in as well. Um, obviously, you got the Green Ducks in there, um, already um, like automatically they were in but you had a rangers make it in mellow yellow make it in and uh, crazy cat size who absolutely killed it in the qualifiers uh make it in so those were huge things for me um i think the big surprises for me in the qualifiers got to be crazy cat size and their performance the balancing as well as um uh i really i really was excited to see mellow yellow do very well as um you know as well because i don't know they were they're teams that i think are going to do well this year and it was really exciting to see them really come out in the qualifiers and show strong that they are here to uh, compete. Um, but uh, I mean, I just I just thought it would have been weird if the Savage Beaters hadn't qualified. But they 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 really did again kill it in the qualifiers. Like, just another example of that team just not losing ever ever. It just doesn't matter. New teams, old teams, many different types of teams. They're just gonna kill it, and they do every time. Um, I can't really think of a team that did not make it into the Marble League this year that I really was, like, super upset about. I mean, obviously, I'd love to see some of those teams kind of, you know, dance around in the, uh, in the actual events a little bit. But, uh, I mean, they're, they weren't, they're not really, like, my number one team, so I'm okay with it. What about you, Steve? Any disappointing non, uh, non-qualifications? Honestly, yeah, there are two teams I actually did expect to qualify with was Team Primary and Snowballs. I really... Mm. I those were the two two teams I did I really expected to qualify, but no, they didn't. They did not qualify. Uh, but of yeah. course, we gotta talk about the Pinkies. They pretty much have, have hit. The, they were, well, they've always been known as the basement team of the Marble League. But this time, not only they were the basement team, they expanded their basement with the, um, with with the showdown misery room. Yeah, yeah. Wait, they didn't qualify right either, right? No, no. They end up rock bottom at twelve in la- in last place with twelve points. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That sucks, man. I always, I always saw the pinkies as a team that always somehow squeaks by, but then really sucks in the actual Marvel League. Um, oh, I kind of got used to them being there, but just not doing very well. But um, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see them in Showdown. I hope I hope they do well in Showdown. I want to see the Pinkies make a comeback. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just for their sake. But uh, it's a little bit off, man. I think they have some training to do. I think they have some, you know, just more mental training as well to do. Um, the kind of refocus um, in the Marble League. There's a lot of new teams a lot, and a lot of pressure as the Marble League continues to grow in popularity. So they're going to have to bring it back with a new energy next time, I think. Um I don't know if we're going to see that, but uh, I certainly would love to see that. And, yeah, also, of course, Rock Rollers might be missing on the fourth year in a row. Fourth mm. year. Oh, yeah, shoot. I forgot. I, They've never, never actually that, yeah. qualified. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's pr- it's pr- it's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's, a, it's a real shame like, to see these teams that haven't really had a chance to shine. But, like, I mean, this is how it goes. I mean, because you actually how... are seeing, like, relatively the same teams this year right i mean like who's actually new this year the hornets i guess made it in just barely um the bumblebees i don't think ever made this is their, their first year in i feel so like they, no, they're new um, aren't they did they no we've seen the bumblebees in marble league 
Uh, Marvel we? Olympics. Yeah, I think so. Um, but and Mindy Maniacs we've seen. And like, they were, yeah, in 2018, yeah. Uh, let, let, let me look at the Bumblebees real quick. And everybody else is a classic. We didn't even see the Chocolatiers make it in, and they were always just a classic veteran team of the Marble oh, League. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of – this is the same teams really this year, and it really starts to show who is actually um, a strong, skilled team. Because um, you had Orangers, Mellow Yellow, Savage Speeders. Those were all teams that did not get a free pass this time. They had to actually compete in the qualifiers. And so, you know, it begged the question, people were thinking, wow, well, maybe that one of them won't even make it this year. Maybe they'll, you know, buckle under the pressure of the new teams and things like that. But no, all of them performed really strong. So I think it was just, it, it was just interesting to me that, even with the new pressures and some of the teams not getting that free pass they actually usually do get, like the Savage Beaters, still the same level of skill coming from all of those teams. Um, there, there wasn't even a doubt, pretty much, for most of those teams that they were going to already be making it. So, um, honestly, I mean, I think the, I think the teams that, that didn't make it this year just have a lot of work to do, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like um, I, I, um, our live chat um, just confirmed that uh, the Bumblebees – did not are new like and like I looked it up just to make sure yeah they haven't competed actually before in Marble League mm. like they like they they were they were offered to join in 2019 but they declined because they did not, they thought they weren't ready just yet but now they but clearly they are now and we'll, we'll get into that with the first event as we discuss that no yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and oh, about yeah some players but if you take a look at the table you can see just how. To just how packed the results were around the cutoff line because there are only four teams with 35 points and two teams with 30, 30 with there are four teams with 35 points there wow four yeah four way tie what was that what placements for those and okay the first team only 11th bumblebees 12th team primary 13th and jungle jumpers 14th. well how do they break that tie then Big, the Bumblebees made it through because they got second place in the first event, but Team Primary got third place in the third event. Oh, so it's based on medals, I guess, or in like yeah, level of yeah, your medals. Yeah. Uh, that's oh. a shame. Yeah. Team yeah, because that's that's really close. It it does kind of put a different perspective because you know then Team Primary didn't really seem that bad. They were pretty much close as just as close to squeaking through as like Team Momo. It's just that they didn't medal as high. Yeah. I mean, that's really what goes to show you how important it is in every event to go hard at every event because that extra place, the getting second instead of third, getting that middle is so key. Sometimes even breaking silly ties like that that decide whether you are in or out of the real Marble League. So it's actually very important, um, kind of a nice lesson there for, for future teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I, I'm really just excited to try and talk about event one because like, it was, dude, it was so crazy. Can, can you go ahead and move on? Like, um, is right? I think before we move on, um, we should address a couple things. First thing, is, first thing I want to address is the, um, is the new style of funnel spin, which I think is just as important oh, here. Right, very, yeah, very key. Yes. Um, I, I got to go say is I love the new funnel spin. I really do. I do too. I love the th- yeah. I love the, this normal for normal funnels, but the next the last last four the one you know the short two short ones two really long ones I love them I really really love them. No, I I really I really enjoyed the change as well. Um, oh, another thing I'll touch on just before we get into the funnels, which are the most notable difference. It was a couple differences in the other events. If you looked at the balancing event, you did have a slight difference in skin. You could say like there's this different style. They actually put the little kind of. Uh, lines on the balancing to make it look more um, kind of be able to see better which marbles are following the lines and which way they're falling off towards and stuff um, which is actually helpful to kind of really analyze and see what what's happening to marbles as they come down um, and then if you take a look at the um, oh crap what was even oh the what was the wait what was the third event again <laughs> I couldn't I can't remember so we had it was balancing funnel spin what was that third one uh, block pushing. Um, what? Block pushing? Yeah. Well, block pushing, yeah. Yes. Block pushing was a little bit different. Well, well I, I think, again, a slight variation on uh, the look to it on the block um, as well, and, and and maybe on the distance that the marbles would travel. So 
Um, because you actually saw the block and some of the marbles pop out a lot more in the, this particular block pushing. So those are very small differences, not super important. And, and the five meter sprint is very slightly differently set up as well. But um, yeah, the main difference definitely um, the look back at the funnel spin. Uh, definitely the new funnels, I really like them because not only did you have the orange funnels and the green funnels, so you had different sizes of funnels, but you also introduced different types of green funnels. Three of the green funnels were focused on lots of spinning. They were big and they had a lot, a very um, low angle of gradient down to the middle, but then the other two were a little bit more steep and they had a different type of spout. So marbles were kind of falling down them very quickly. So it was really interesting to see all the different types of funnels, how the marbles would interact with them. Um, and that, you know, it's not just one type of funnel you have to practice on. It, it was a good surprise for the marbles this year. I really liked the change up. I mentioned this last year or something about the funnels been having some different types of funnels. So I was really excited to see that. Yeah. Like the, adding those bigger funnels really helped to make it more interesting. It's like, like I don't know, like I don't know about you, but when watching the uh, the funnels, the the funnel spins, like there's always like a little tell that you can like when watching, like to know when a marble is gonna go, which marble is gonna go for, end up going through first. Like, yeah. If you really watch closely, it's, there's always when like, and so to, to give it a much wider area that, that can result in much different marble spin patterns, it really. Sp- helps to spice up the competition and makes it more unpredictable and i really enjoyed that it's no really yeah good. yeah because i think it, it kind of really changes up the kind of the kind of spinning you're going to see because if you look at the orange funnels you're going to see a lot of marble goes in it's just going around it's about to fall through then another marble comes in from above but because the funnel's so small that marble that just fell in is going to immediately knock in the marble that's about to fall through and then usually you know you kind of guess what's going to happen and you usually guess right so it was kind of changing it up um that like literally a lot longer spinning and it's so it was it got way more unpredictable because you really were like i have no idea what marbles are going to fall through first and then like they often sometimes even spin so long they end up pausing right before they fall through and it's kind of like it's, it, the more marbles there are the more crazy it is too because it really is like wow no idea what's going to happen yeah uh all right so can we talk about event one now we, can we, do you want to talk about event one? Sure. Oh, I really wait, want what to talk about, about fri- Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> we would be remiss to not talk about the friendly round that came up as well. The friendly round. Um, <sighs> of, okay. I know, I know. I know you want to get into event one. I know you want to get into event one. But we have to at least react to what we think about the friendly round and how those teams did. Steve, go ahead. Well, if we judge any, if it, the friendly round is anything judged by Raspberry Race, just like really determined to defend their title. Mm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Well, I really hope the Green Sorry. Ducks pick up. And well, Green Ducks was little, points was a little bit disappointing, but rest of, but anything else? Well, I don't think I really can say anything about that about the friendly round. About apart from that, obviously. No, yeah, for me, the big surprise was uh, the Green Ducks. It w- they were absolutely awful in the friendly round, in, in all honesty. Like, they were not just underperforming. They were terrible um, yeah, in the friendly it's round. That's my theory. Because, um, I just have a feeling they were just, you know, saving all their energy for the first time. And they were just, you know, just being, just was there just to have fun, just have fun, just go out with the flow and... Let's try and just save them for the for the real event. Yeah, and they did they did average in the first event, so I'm hoping they really that conserved energy uh, resurfaces in, in the coming events. But it just they did terrible. It was it was very very uh, um, unfortunate to look at. So hopefully they were just saving energy, trying to keep it cool, and they're going to come back strong in the main events. But uh, man, I mean the Raspberry Racers killed it. They were doing really well. Um, Team Galactic actually kept up with them. Team Galactic usually is not as good as the the top three competitors. They're usually middle of the pack, so it's good to see them keep up. And the Hazers, I mean, for me, the Hazers are always like the, the team that like they do very very well, but they always kind of disappear. I never really notice them, even though they're doing um, usually pretty well. So, I mean, it was it was a good it was a good friendly round, but definitely the Green Ducks' performance was very because they didn't even do well in any of the events. They really did not. So it was kind of it was lackluster overall um because usually in the friendly round each each team will kind of get close to or actually win each uh a, a different event so yeah they have they have some work to do they have some refocusing to do definitely um but yeah i know waff really wants to talk about event one 
Uh, so yes. we're going to get into event one, and I think we're going to start talking about event one by declaring our predictions. We have to declare predictions before event one um, for who will win uh, this year's Marble League. I made my predictions. I went with a main prediction and then a secondary prediction, like a backup prediction that I think will have a chance to win, especially if this particular team does not do very well, um, before the first event. All right, that's when I made my predictions, and I'm going to hold to them for the year. Um, so I think I'll start us off, and then we'll let Waff predict, and we'll let Steve predict, and then okay. we can really get into the details regarding Event 1 and what we thought about the performances of the specific marbles. So um, for me... Um, as you know, my my favored teams. I have six really favored teams that I favor over the other ones. Not my, you know, I like I try to stay relatively unbiased for the podcast, but I have teams that I favor. Limers is one. Limers are obviously not competing. Um, Arrangers is one, but I don't think they're going to win this year. Uh, Momo is one as well, but I don't think they're going to win this year either. Um, Crazy Cat Eyes, uh, Mellow Yellow, and Green Ducks are the other three. Um, I don't think Green Ducks are going to win this year. I do not, especially after the quali- their friendly round performance. I don't think they have it. I don't think that they were going to be able to keep up the performance they had last year through to this year. So um, my prediction, and I've mentioned this in the previous podcast, but I'm going to go with it. This I'm actually putting it in stone now. I'm putting it down, throwing it down. My prediction for this year's victor of the Marble League is Mellow Yellow. Um, I know what we saw in Event One. Um, I'm yeah. sticking with, with. I'm sticking with them though. They had a great performance in balancing in the qualifiers. So I mean, they do have it in them, and they did pretty well in the qualifiers. I think Mellow Yellow is an unsung team of the Marble League, and I want to see it happen this year. And my secondary prediction um, came from the qualifiers, the great performance from the Crazy Cat's Eyes. That's my secondary prediction. They are another example of a veteran team who's been here a while, who just hasn't had their year yet, but has always performed well overall. So those two teams, they're both teams that are actually relatively consistent out there in the field. Mellow Yellow is, in my opinion, known for consistency, while Crazy Cat's Eyes kind of disappears usually. But they actually perform pretty well um, as well so i think that both of those veteran teams absolutely have a chance this year and i think i think mellow yellow will take it um or crazy cat size well so that's that's what i'm predicting for this year um based on event one here uh we'll see we got 16 events to go uh, so you know 15 events to go so I'm, le- I'm gonna let it all roll out you know what i'm saying i'm gonna let it raspberry race out there you know what i'm saying okay, but uh, okay. hey puns right i'm gonna let it uh-huh. uh oh yeah right. um but so well, I guess my, pred- my prediction. You, you do it. <laughs> uh, of course, I, I'm, first and foremost, I will always pick uh, Momo over everyone else. If it's if, if so, but if I'm if I go with like statistics here, well, I mean like after this first event, like we'll see like Momo actually has pre- has got a pretty great start, and so there's actually a stati- like, there's actually not a bad chance there. But I think uh, a, a really good team to, like that would, could potentially win it would be. Um, the Raspberry Racers just like like they're clearly showing both from the friendly round and at, from event one that they are bringing their A game and they are not slowing down since their championship. So oh, they're not I, gonna win. They, they have the experience, they have they're the drive, and I think like th- if there's a, statistically one team that's gonna have the highest likelihood to win, it would probably be the Raspberry Racers. I think you see the Savage Beaters take their second victory before you take the Raspberry Racers to take their second victory. Uh, we'll see about that. They didn't do. Oh, you it think so the good. Savage Beaters are gonna sit there and let Raspberry Racers take the the second victory before they do? Winners of the first Marbula one. I don't know how they did that, by the way. But we'll, uh, see. we'll see. But like, we'll see. So yeah, so, so yeah. Let's finally get into that one because I I can't. I'm tired of it. I can't take it anymore. Holy crap! That was probably the best balancing that we've seen. Like, well, you have to th- let so Steve many... predict. Oh, sh- did Steve? Oh, did you not? I'm so wow, sorry. You're I... too excited, man. You're, well, you're excited. wasting so much time predicting it, Dude, We're getting get into, into it. We I want to predict. We want to. We want to. No, we have to make sure that we cover the qualifiers and the, the build-up for Marble League because if we get right into the events and then pull back and give our predictions and it's like it's almost out of order you know so we, we got to give our predictions we got we got to throw them out there and then we could talk about the disaster of Mellow Yellow in event one go ahead Steve give us our predictions well obviously my winners well obviously are the Orangers I even got the Orangers t-shirt <laughs> earlier this year oh oh yeah absolutely but oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah there's some Orange is my first pick, but seven second pick, like uh, like for you, like it has to be crazy cat size. That team is just oh yeah, off. crazy cat size. It's, oh crazy cat size. That team is on fire right now, and if they keep this up, I feel they're on fire. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, but Crazy Cat, so basically Orange is first pick, or um, Crazy Cat is his second pick. Okay, okay, that's 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 mm -hmm. a good stratification of picks from all three of us, actually. I think, I think, I can say this. I think at least one of the teams that the three of us has chosen will win this year's Marble League. Um, I know there's a possibility that the Savage Beaters are going to come back and take victory number two. It's hard, hard, hard. For me to see the Savage Beaters coming back and taking victory two this year. But if any team's going to make that kind of move right now, it would be the Savage Beaters. I am very, very doubtful about the Raspberry Racers doing that, I have to be honest. And I think that I'm very, very doubtful about the Green Ducks or the Hazers making that kind of move as well. I don't think those teams are as experienced as people saw from them last year. They're not going to come back with that same ferocity, I don't believe, over the course of the season. But... Um, no, I think I think all of our predictions covered uh, covered the victor this year. We'll we'll have to see, but uh, I think it's very very possible. So Waf, I know you've been super excited about event one. Please say what you want to say about event one uh, balancing here. Okay, so a lot of veteran teams like Savage Speeders, um, team team like and especially uh, the yellow mellow yellow did absolutely terrible. Uh, and yet then like even... the new the new teams or the the more inexperienced ones like. Like like the Bumblebees and especially Minty Maniacs oh, did yeah. absolutely amazing. Like 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 uh uh you know what? Okay, actually um I'll save that for the trivia. But anyways, it's like this. Like, the point is like uh like this is the probably the most unexpected result I could have ever possibly have mm. seen coming. Cause like 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 the idea of. Like the Savage Speeders and and the Mellow Yellow, like both doing so badly, like, and, and then, the like, Rangers just, for that matter, they weren't that great either. They weren't that great either, yeah. Like and, and then like just to see teams like Momo who have been doing very great for quite Momo a long time. Momo did well in the balancing. Yeah, I was yeah. so surprised. And then, they and then really like, just, killed in the balance. Just, they got I'm two so to the excited. end. Did they not get two to the end of the they lane? Did, they did. Did, did they is, not? This is the year. This is the year. The year yeah, of the um, Momo. Year of the dumpling. Hey. I am um, the dumpling. You, Waff is the dumpling. Write that down, Mr. Waff. All right. Um, there you go. We haven't, had, we haven't had one of those in a while, I will say we that. We have not, but um, now we've got another one. No, but, uh, no. Oh, my God. I was very surprised by this first result um, in event one. We saw Mini Maniacs. We saw Momo. I, I mean, Crazy Cat Size, most people would kind of throw them in there with Momo and Mini Maniacs, even though I think they're a lot better. But they even did well um, in this event as well. Then you saw Mellow Yellow. You know, you saw Savage Beaters just fall apart. Did you, like, like looking yeah. at those events, they looked like Momo in balancing qualifiers. Came out, boom, yeah. splayed out to the side. You could see how Greg Woods was so surprised, too. He was like, oh, my God, what happened there, you know? I mean, it was it was terrible for those teams. Um, the only thing I could think of is either they kind of got all their skill out in the qualifiers balancing, where they both did very very well in the qualifiers balancing, or just um, they felt the pressure of needing to do good since they're teams that are expected to do good. While Mini Maniacs and Momo, they know that they're not really expected to really do good, so they were they were not overthinking it. But I mean, I don't know, but it just fell apart. A very surprising finish. And our, our Chaz also mentioned that something that, like, um, but the racers, like, last year, they got 14th in balancing. And now, now they got second. Like, th like this is just all over the board. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who got, wait, which the raspberry, the raspberry racers, like, they got yeah, 14th the in balancing were... last year. And they got, sec and they yeah. got second this time. Which, like, th this is going to be a really good year, I can tell. Oh, it's, it's this... going to be a crazy oh, Marvel yeah. League, absolutely. This yeah, if this be... is any indication. Absolutely. If this keeps up, this is going to be the best Marble League ever. Ever. But It may be. I'm surprised you guys didn't talk about Team Galactic. I think I, saw, I think they are starting to suffer the early early symptoms of the they Yeah, games. they they really <laughs> sucked. Um, yeah. I like... hate to be so crude there, but they really, really well, were disappointing in Event 1. Um, absolutely. I, I, I took note of that. Like, oh my god, are we going to have another one of these? Are we going to have another one of these, yeah, uh, I, host card I didn't situations? Want, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to mention it just because, like, I, I, I hate, like, perpetuating the whole idea of the host curse thing. And, like, it's just, it's just the first event, and so we can't say... No, we can't. We have to again, be careful. A lot of great teams, like Savage Speeders, 
like did really bad too. So it's not it wasn't just mm. like oh it's because the, they did bad because of the hosts. Like a lot of good teams were doing bad, and a lot of be- teams who did bad at balancing did really really good. So we can't really judge anything at this moment. I'm yeah, reserving it. The whole Hearst Coast thing. Her, 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 Hearst Coast? Host Hearst Curse. Coast. Hearst Coast. <laughs> Is there a Hearst Coast the, the, in the Marble League? The, the, what do you think, Steve? Maybe. <laughs> Hearst seen. Coast, man. Is Hearst Coast the name of one of the... It's like Finding Roldo. Finding Roldo. Oh, my gosh. Does anyone, did, did anyone look for Roldo, by the way? This is like a, a fan mm. poll for anyone who no. listens. I'd love a couple comments I, on our I used to look for Roldo Does actively on that? every video. I, I don't do that every video, but well, like, I mean, I haven't done it recently. No, I, I don't, don't usually I, do it because like I'm like colorblind, so it'd be hard for me to really pick it out. After I'd be able to do it if I really looked hard, but it'd be hard. But like, does anyone really look for? Because I, I don't know. I mean, no, I love the I'm too busy, attention to detail. I'm too but... busy watching the, the the whole event. I'm too busy watching. <laughs> yeah. Normally, what I'll end up doing is like if I catch Roldo on my first viewing, great. And like before, I would actively go I go back after watching the event to then try and find him. But I, 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 I guess kind of, there was at one point I just couldn't find him one time. Then I was kind of like, like uh, it's whatever. If if I find him, I find him. If I don't, I don't. So I, I kind of drifted away from trying to find Roldo. But like, like it's a it's a fun little thing. But anyways, like, yeah, like, like oh. oh, and like the the the, uh, the the strategy. Like I think we should actually discuss like why some of the teams are bad. Like I think a lot of them. Oh yeah, were, I really have a couple yeah. um for that. Um, I really want to focus in on these two yeah. uh, really quick, and then I'll let you guys kind of debrief them as well. But two I really want to mention here, and this this is deep analysis, but I, I think this is what's going on here. First up, Savage Beaters on the chopping block here. You look at that formation, very obvious what's going on. You had four marbles there. You get four come down. Those back two marbles really splayed out to the, to the right and left side, came up with a lot of speed, overtook the front marbles. And Greg even mentioned this. And then they, they, they lost it. And I think what happened here is if you, if you – obviously the Savage Beaters are a speed-based – team and so and and they usually expect themselves to be you know that's that's what that's how they raise so i think what happened is the formation kind of got confused and the savage beaters the back marbles of that team definitely were expecting a lot more speed from their front marbles because usually what they do is they all come out they're all going real fast have a lot of speed and so they just keep they kind of keep straight the whole time and that's how the savage beaters usually do very well in balancing in the past so when those back marbles they come out with the speed they're they're used to then the front couple of marbles are are not gaining the speed that i mean more of the second marble was really a problem did not really have the speed you that usually is expected it kind of all went downhill from there because you know they kind of they kind of take the strategy of let's just push all four as fast as we can to the end and it just did not work out there was too much collision they came off to the sides it was an absolute mess um and then another one i want to zero in on here is mellow yellow oh my god mellow yellow I think what happened, the problem with Mellow Yellow was the way Mellow Yellow usually strategizes. Mellow Yellow often will strategize where they try to favor their back marbles. Um, They come out into the formation, and usually their top two will kind of splay out purposefully to the right and left sides to make room for the back marbles to take a nice straight roll to the end. That did not happen. Unfortunately, those two splayed out, but then the back marbles didn't follow through. They did not... They did not perform as expected and how probably they practiced. So it really went downhill for them as well because formation wasn't followed for both of those teams. I think you're seeing pressure get to them. I think you're seeing um, there maybe some ego getting to them. I don't think Mellow Yellow as much as a culprit of this as Savage Speeders, but some ego as well kind of giving them to let, let their guard down, figuring they always got it under control. Maybe some more refocusing and practicing really to make sure they have their – you know, they're always tried and true strategies down is really necessary for these next events. Um, anyway, your thoughts uh, on this and other teams. Uh, go ahead, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, what I think I noticed is, uh, and I think Greg meant, briefly mentioned this in his commentary, like a lot of the teams were replicating their formations for collision, mm-hmm. which is not what they should have, like, which, is, like, which is just not what works here. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before. But no, <laughs> collision, for... save collision for collision, right? Yeah. For, for, for I did me, not like, make I... that in. Balancing the way that like uh, like the formation that, that really should be done is like I think it should be like two and two like kind of like like next to each other because like there are several times like that you'll notice some some teams like for instance uh you can briefly see with the Raspberry Racers during the event like the ra- uh like they w- the two marbles at the end like they would um kind of touch each other to keep each other on the the track 
I think if that if the side marble there wasn't there, one of them would have fallen off before reaching the uh, the very end. Whereas like some marbles like uh, would hit each other off because there was just too much of them. So like the main strategy I think for me is like you have two two like um two marbles b back to back. That way, if one of them starts to fall off, one of them can maybe like come in to try and save the day a little bit mm -hmm. by knocking him back on course. Which ultimately will probably result in that marble falling off themselves, but it's better to guarantee a finisher than to like have both of them fall out, you know? Yeah, and uh, having watched enough balancing um, at this point, um, many years now, a solid balancing performance always has two finishers. You have one finisher looking at an average performance. You have zero finishers. You're looking at a complete mess. You have three finishers. You're really putting it out of the park. A solid um classic respectable marble league level balancing performance is two to the end and and that's why the savage speeders and mellow yellow strategies usually works out because the way they set it up two are always getting to the end you know mellow yellow um allowing the black back marbles to work savage speeders pushing all four ahead you're usually getting two at the end those strategies did not work. They didn't get two to the end. And with, when you don't get two to the end in Marble League balancing, you are not going to succeed. Unless you happen to have the weird thing where you get one to the end, but you have, like, the other two kind of go off at 120. That's different. But, like, these the strategies that these marbles, I believe, um, work to create are ones that always get two to the end. And it just did not work for a lot of these marbles today. Um, and... They messed up. They, they like, like Waff said, they took some sort of collision style formations, which was not good. Uh, Steve, um, I'll, I'll well, let Steve talk at you first. Well, yeah, because this, because well, you do have to keep in mind that team collision and balance are two completely different things. But oh, I mean, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but for me, uh, I think the team the uh, the team that really tried under the pressure was Team Momo. They like they. Went from second second last in qualifiers to sixth sixth in first event. Yeah, and, yeah. And meanwhile, as as much as this pains to, pains me to say, our Rangers really do need to work to start working and train and do some work on the balance balancing because they were as they as much as they are consistent. They, they I feel with their, they are really consistent with pretty disappointing uh, performances, but. Um, Honestly, this was the, and they were only saved by you know, you know, only saved by the pressure reducing, reducing everyone's scores, you know, in the first event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a Rangers pretty much follows suit with what we were saying about Savage Beaters and, and Mellow Yellow. All those, are, those are the big teams that people expect to do well, and I think that there's some yeah. lack of focus or some expectation that oh, we're so good, we're gonna do well anyway. Yeah, that just they're they're losing some focus and it, it, it's really it's really not good it's not yeah they and so end, yeah, yeah they actually end up having the same result with no she i mean no she I, I mean sorry i mean oceanics <laughs> no she yeah. huh? no and actually oceanics were not even that bad they were middle of the pack and yeah. you know i mean compared to their unfortunate Last year, they they're coming back okay. They they uh -huh. they could do okay. We'll have to see. But they could they could uh, turn out okay this year. You know what I'm saying? They could they they could hit the mark this year. So I mean, I guess keep your eyes on the Oceanics. But definitely, we I hope to see, especially in an event like the Half Pipe, which actually not many of these new teams have really experienced. Green Ducks haven't experienced a Half Pipe. Oh, Bumblebees yeah. haven't. All right, I'm, Hornets I'm, have not. I'm looking for a half pipe. I really enjoy half pipe in the in the 2018 Olympic uh, on the Marble League. No, yeah, and um, I really think that we're gonna see the veteran teams start to reappear here in the half pipe. Absolutely, because not only are they angry and a little bit, you know, jolted awake by this first event and, and their performances, but they know the half pipe. They've been in the half pipe before, and I think it would take a very large stroke of luck from these rookie teams or these new teams at least to the half pipe mm -hmm. event that would to knock these these veterans out i'm expecting big things from uh, mellow yellow from more rangers from <clears throat> savage speeders um and uh, in the half pipe this year absolutely uh waff anything anything from you i thought you had something you wanted to say so i pause there 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my, 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 my <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, wow, is he, is he going? Oh, did, did my con- I thought my connection might have um, died, so I I kind of re- left and came back in again. Sorry. So, uh, but oh, yeah, let me get you. Yeah. W- uh, the one other thing that I want to mention, like, 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 none of the teams really came close to being the record, but again, going back to no, the yeah, Mickey Maniacs again, like, did you see that that save, like that swerve right off the edge? That was just masterful performance right there. The swerve like, from who? Um, one of the Minty Maniac marbles, like, on balancing, like, they were about to go off the edge, and then suddenly they just swerve right back in. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was, it was, I mean, I don't even know what to say about the Minty Maniacs, but they just came to play, man. That was, oh, yeah. and they were, they were alert on the field in game. They were, they were quick thinking, and they didn't, they didn't give up just because it, it, it the formation was bad at first. Dude, I am so... So glad I picked Minty Maniacs for my Marble League uh, fantasy. For my fantasy wow, you league. picked them for fantasy, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not. Oh, I did not join that actually. Um, I should have. Yeah, I picked, I, the, have. I picked the Rangers, Green Ducks, Crazy Cats, as Minty Maniacs, and Team Momo. So I think I got some really good picks there. No, I really think you did. I was late to the thing too, so I didn't get it to be. I wasn't. I can't. I wasn't able to join the little fantasy. I, I forgot to do it. Uh, which is a, but no, but, which but is I sad. think I think Steve um, has got some good picks because I think what you're going to see is the old Rangers aren't giving up, bud. So they're coming back. Oh, you no, can no, you can no, bet no, on no. that. Green Ducks are going to have a solid performance. I'm going to put the Green Ducks probably between about t- um, 10th and 5th place this year. I think you're going to see them there. Um, Team Momo, I think, is going to do a lot better than we've seen. I'm going to put them anywhere between 11th and 6th. I do not think they're going to top 5 this year. I know that it that it's a good guess, though. It, they might. But I'm just going to put them like 11th to 6th. Um, but you do have some good teams. And, and Rangers, I think a Rangers could uh, could be anywhere between 8th and 3rd this year. Um, and I think uh, Crazy Cat's Eyes, like I said, they're my secondary pick for the victory. So, I mean, you're going to see them up there as well. So, I think you have some very, very good picks. Mini Maniacs. Um, it's very hard to place the Mini Maniacs. It's hard for me to kind of well, give a, a definite grouping of five placements yeah. that they're going to well, fall in. In my opinion, um, they are not you know, the, the kind of winning material, but they are easily top 10 at least. Hmm, yeah, I mean... Oh, I, I guess... The, ugh, I don't know. This is important, I guess, I mentioned that this is their first gold in Marble League. Oh, like, yeah, even, like, that's true. Even, yeah. even for qualifiers, too, like, this is, like, the first time they've ever gotten a gold in Marble League, which is very great, which is a great achievement for them. Like, just right out the gate, they're, they, they, they really are going to be a force i think they're, they're gonna be a force to be reckoned with i think this year I th- we'll I see man we'll see i mean i'm kind of hoping we see these veteran teams kind of reinstate their uh, their place all right i don't want to I, I really don't want um this 2020 marble league this this hyped up 2020 marble league to be a marble league belonging to the minty maniacs but you know what hey um marble league's <laughs> gonna be what marble league's gonna be all right you can't but- you can't dance around that at all I can't remember. What, didn't you say something about a? Uh, what was it like? Uh, like you, you said you did, like something about like you made a, you made like some sort of bet about like the Hubalino teams like making it or not. Don't making it. I don't even remember what that was. If someone actually finds what I said about that, I, I guess I we think, can bring that back up. If anybody remembers, like like I I, I don't I, I don't know what it was, but like I think it's it's just funny like 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 you doubted the Hubalino team so much. Now and, like, now 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 one of them's got their first gold in the first yeah, event. What are the odds of that? Gonna eat your words, oh, man. Just like with the Limers. Um, but I, if someone actually finds the episode and the thing that I said for that, I guess we can uh, re revisit that particular bet. But uh, for now, we should actually jump to the trivia segment. Um. And then we're going to come back after the trivia segment and briefly discuss Glass Car. But um, one thing I want to mention before we get to trivia, um, about the actual presentation of the stadium itself, I think obviously the graphics, as you know, are very much updated. JMR did a very good job with that. But I think the stadium itself was a little bit underwhelming for me. I honestly do. I think that the events themselves did not really take on a color scheme similar to what I would expect from something like Team Galactic. Like, I really would have enjoyed if they kind of strayed from the JMR colors to actually adapt some of the team's colors. Like, so Team Galactic, where you have that whole purple style on the graphics, I would have loved to have seen that maybe on the actual pieces 
in the um in the in the events themselves so like a purple theme maybe some of the blocks mm. were purple maybe some, you know what i'm saying just just to actually really embellish the the theme because like if team galactic were to actually build their own stadium for the marble league they probably wouldn't go blue and white for the actual uh blocks absolutely not so i would i would have liked to seen that that's a little bit picky and they know that like you can't just yeah. you can't buy every single color of, of the certain blocks that they use but uh you know maybe a little paint or something they could have embellish that theme a little bit more but uh, that, that's just picky and, and ridiculous they put a lot yeah. of work into it but uh, it definitely would have been cooler in that in that method so without further ado guys let's jump into the trivia segment and then we'll come back and we will uh touch on glass car for a few minutes before we wrap up for today now it's time for the trivia segment come on now let's go 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 all right, and we're at trivia. I think we're just at trivia. The music played, right? Is that how it works? You insert it in in the post, and that's just... Why do I, why do I talk about that every time? Can I just pretend like the music's played and it's all good and then just go right into the trivia? Can I just do that for once? Let's do that. <laughs> um, Steve, do you have a trivia question for us tonight? Yeah, name the... Uh, can you name the first event where Streaker actually got on the track? Can you say again? Uh, the first event in Marble League uh, where it's a streaker from the stands uh, end up in a on a field uh, on a field. Ooh, that's a tough. That's a tough question. Um, I believe it if, was. Can you, give, can you give me the year for it? Well, okay, I'll give you a hint. If I if my information is correct, it it's from 2017. 2017. All right. The first streaker I believe Ooh, was hard. was a. It was I believe it was the fi- It was the. Five meter sprint, if I'm not mistaken. Um, wait, let me let me give a guess though. Uh, I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna go long jump for that. I think it was long jump. I'm gonna go long jump. Well, actually, well, again, if my information is correct, it was actually the streaker in the fidget spinner event. There was oh, a streaker really? in the fidget spinner event. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, probably. I think yeah. around Momo's injury, correct? Yeah, unfortunately, mm. the very tragic one. The, at the event will, which will go down in infamy, <laughs> in, in Marble League infamy. Absolutely, though that that is a that is kind of a pretty jolting event in in Marble League history. Absolutely, I didn't know that. I I thought it was. I always thought it was just kind of like some random long jump event or something. But uh, yeah, I think it might have appeared in some long jump event, but not. I guess not in uh, that particular order. So, cool. Good question. That really. There. I know that trivia now, but I I really uh, had to think about that. Waff, do you want to take the next one, buddy? Oh, yes. So, uh, so as we know, uh, f- sorry, Mellow Yellow did not do very good in bouncing, but I, I want to I, I ask, how, like, just, like, just how bad did they do? Like, so, how bad, like, you really do you think, th- like, so, compare, there's only, it's like, I want you to, uh, how low do you, th- like, you know, actually, sorry, I'm, s- can you phrase the brain. question? Yeah, you know what, sorry, my brain is not, uh, okay. Mellow Yellow has had the second worst performance ever in balancing. Really? What, wow! What Jesus. is the team? What team did worse than them, and what was their and how big of a difference in the score was it? Oh, this is a good question. Oh my god! Oh, uh, that's a really hard question. Um, I think I'm, yeah, this is in the this will be in the news, so at least our, our listeners will know, but the, you guys won't. So let's oh, see. Oh, what team did worse? I mean, and, there's a lot of. And, and and worse just overall ever like yeah, qualifiers overall ever. and stuff account. Uh, yeah, any instance of of the ba- of balancing, which is there's actually not that too many where a team got a lower score than Mellow Yellow did. Can I mean that's a really tough question. Can I ask for a year? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was 2019. It was twenty. See, I was actually thinking more towards twenty nineteen actually, because I just feel like there were some very terrible balancing performances. Um. Oh man, I feel like it was showdown. I'm gonna go limers. I'm gonna I mean, go lime. I I feel like limers is so likely for this kind of stupid, worst ever balancing type thing. Only picking up three points. Three points, if we remember, in Showdown. So they obviously had a pretty bad balancing performance. So the chances of it being the Limers are actually pretty high at this point. So I'm going to go Limers. I, I love the Limers, but you know what, Limers? You're going to have to practice a little bit more, you know? 
And do you have like a guess how like how big of a, a score difference was? Like like to put it into perspective, um, gonna, Mellow Yellow's score was one fifty six. Uh, I'm gonna go with a, a forty seven point difference. I'll go four, with um, Jungle. I think I'll, I'll put my bets on Jungle Jumpers. Oh, and do you have a do you have a guess on like on like how big of a point difference uh, there was between the two? Twenty or twenty. All right. So the answer is indeed the Jungle Jumpers. They have had oh. the worst performance, and it's actually only a difference of two points. They got 154. So Mellow Yellow almost gave the worst performance ever oh, wow. in balancing. It's a, it's a real shame. Wow. Um, oh. Predictions not getting off to a great. Well, the Crazy Cat's Eyes did well, so I guess the, that prediction is getting off to a good start. But that's a uh, that's a tough. I, I just figured the Limers really had. A, I mean, they had a tough showdown, but I guess I guess they did better. Um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, I do. I do vaguely remember the Jungle Jumpers having a very tough performance in the balancing um, uh, at some point. So I, I think that yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Uh, but who cares about what I remember? Uh, time for trivia. Oh, I gotta have a trivia coming up right here. We're gonna we're gonna. I have one all prepared and ready, of course, like usual, all over prepared. Let's think of a trivia. Um. Oh, wow. I'm kind of blanking right here. Sorry. I usually... Yeah, sorry. That's my bad, guys. Um, trivia, right? Trivia. Trivia. Can really someone send him a trivia, like, really fast? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Usually I do get sent one. That's why. Like, I usually have somebody send me one, and, and they send me because they want to get their question in, so... Well, um, why don't you check ML Facts, uh Instagram? Oh, that's a great idea. Usually has some great facts. Akanon's like, uh, right, he's getting it there. He's getting it there. Uh, no, I'm just going to try to think here for a second. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> That's Hello, not a everybody. trivia question, well, Akanon. Welcome to the silence podcast silence podcast yes well we we are silent as we think of the questions that we're supposed to prepare okay. beforehand well okay. um while you look uh, look it up i can uh, ask a trivia question <laughs> or uh, you can sure <laughs> this will be this will be mine but through you through your body i will provide my trivia question the marvel silence worldwide podcast okay. thank you Jason. okay name the team which got most medals in a season the most medals in a season uh mm. that would be I want to say the I think it was Savage Speeders in the in the first Oh, I year. have a I have a good I have a good trivia. Most medals on a season. Oh, I'll th I'll, we might as well do this one as well. And then I actually do have a trivia question. Sorry about that delay, guys. Um if you're listening this far though, you probably enjoy my stupidity. So, there you go. There's a little dose of that for you. Uh most medals on a season. <laughs> Sorry. I think I can go um uh, I'll address that in a second, uh, YouTube live chat. Um, I think I'll go all Rangers. I think I'll go all Rangers. For most medals on a season, I'm going to go all Rangers for that, absolutely. It was, no, it was actually Raspberry Racers in 2019, which got a whopping mm -hmm. eight to eight. Really? Wow. Wins. Okay, wow. I think, I think we really do forget how good they were in that season. I always right. forget. Eight, I always think, I always think, years. you know. Eight, eight medals in one season. That is insane. Dang. Uh, yeah, I, I keep forgetting like just how, like how like, I knew I always remember that they, yeah they're amazing they're amazing but I didn't remember they were that amazing. <sighs> I feel like we've had a lot of questions that talk about like the best of teams and we always go Savage Beaters or Rangers but it Raspberry Racers are really good like yeah, they, they are we forget they're about really that. good and and they're not my favorite team right they're not like my my really you know want them to win kind of team so i mean like i don't I usually don't think about them very much but yeah they're, they're they're pretty damn good they uh they are literally racing a lot out there so yeah anyway my trivia question is uh actually turning more towards glass car a good segue into our uh, final oh, discussion okay. segment um so volcano um if you remember what volcano what position did volcano start in and what place did he rise to by the end of race one of Glass Car? It was a pretty big gap. I'll give you that hint. Uh, volcano. Oh, I guess. Um, sorry, uh, Steve. You won't be able to answer this one, but volcano started in. He was volcano was second to last, and they finished in fifth. 
fifth. Did they finish in? I thought they were fourth. I swear they were fourth. I'm pretty sure they were fourth. Um, yeah, they were fourth actually. So yeah, uh, uh, it was eleventh to fourth. And actually, um, out of the gate. They went from 11th to second in the first lap. It was a huge um, after like the first stratification of marbles and the and and uh, towards the end of the first lap they had they were starting 11th. They went up to second. They battled pretty much the whole race there, but then they got ousted by Nitro, Rattlesnake, and uh, I believe Rockslide um, by the end of the race. So yeah, they were fourth um, if I remember correctly for that. So. Yeah, yeah right, so, it's a good segue into glass car. Yeah, we're over an hour, so we should get out of the trivia and like really get into glass car. Like, oh yeah, fast. <laughs> okay. I know this is a longer one, but we had a really short intro, and we really had tons of Marvel sports to cover. So we're we're going back from the trivia. Cue that music, meow. Music is kind of playing right now, right? Good. All right, we're back. I wonder where it played between that sentence. That was the trivia segment. Now let's head back to the show, 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 the show. Oh, um. But anyways. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Glass Car, but someone in the YouTube live chat asked me, um, how does it feel to commentate for Fubeka? So I figured it would be a great great opportunity to answer that as Glass Car has just begun. Um, it, it's great. I love doing the commentary. I love doing it. Um, it's really fun, you know? Obviously, I always worry a little bit, am I doing it good? Am I, um, who, is someone going to hate it? You know, you, you always have those things. But, you know, I always work to improve and um, it's really a lot of fun to to be the voice of, of, of an exciting marble sports uh, race, um, and it, I don't know. It it was a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a little bit nerve wracking sometimes. But uh, like a couple of times, you'll get some comments here where people are not very happy with something I did. But uh, you know, I work on always work to improve and. Um, I always work to do the best I can that you guys enjoy it as well and can bring the excitement each time. Um, and, and yeah, it's, uh, it, it really gets me engaged in the race and I do the best I can to bring that engagement to you guys, um, you know, as well. So, so just to make it clear, glass car is basically like the, uh, marble version of NASCAR, right? Yeah, actually, um, a great time for me to explain Glass Car. Yeah, um, a- Glass Car is supposed to be, um, yeah, like NASCAR, playing words, of course, where the difference between that and like Marble, marble Circuits, which was done by Fubeka um, a, a series ago, is that there's a, it's a much wider track, considerably wider than the Marble Drum. It might not look like that, but I think it's about three times as wide, um, or at least two times as wide. And the, big, the marbles are bigger, so they're like San Marble Raleigh size marbles, like 22 millimeter or whatever. And it's... It's, it's a lot faster. It, it introduces one of the most notable re- revolutions in marble sports engineering, and that's the self-propulsion system that that outs the elevator. Um, in, in, in there's, there's actually so much. We should really we should really spend next episode starting with glass car because there's a lot to talk about with that, oh, wow. and we're really getting late today. But so there's just there's a lot. Is really interesting. the The elevator was taken out, and instead they have a propulsion system that shoots the marbles up. They come through at a certain speed, and it shoots them up faster. So we can get up the hill, and then they go around. and Actually, it worked out really well in race one. Um, and and the course is kind of less turn heavy. Like it doesn't have a lot of you know twisty turns in the track, but more like wide turns in the first track. So it's more based like that. Um, now, I do want to touch on a couple things on Glass Car real quick, and then I'll let Waff touch on a couple things. But we are probably going to bring back Glass Car and, and start off with it next episode. Um, just kind of really cover all the things um, we thought about it. But two big takes I have on it is, first off, as many of the fans commented, the um, the use of the little divider guideline foam things that stick out on the track stuck out way too far and they were used way too much and it kind of dampened the speed of the marbles and that actually made the race a little bit difficult for me to commentate because the race got a little boring sometimes because the marbles were always losing speed on those things so um i think fubica is going to be taking those out and like shortening those in 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 future racers he's also actually going to be featuring some straight oval oval shaped tracks as well so um look at look out for that yeah, absolutely, um, like in real NASCAR. So um, that's one thing. The other thing is I think the I – th- I believe the tracks he made were handmade, those um, those little lane tracks with the t- triple lanes and the, the dotted lines. Those were handmade, um, and they look incredible. Glass car runs smoothly. Fubica has stepped up his editing ability as well. The placements of the marbles uh, now um, – 
update real time, so it's much easier for me as a commentator and for view- fans as viewers. Um, the editing on beginning and the end is much more stepped up. It's less jerky. It's much. I mean, he, he still has got a little bit of language barrier, so sometimes things kind of read a little bit weird, but everything is a lot more compact um, and, and, and correctly edited. So I'm really happy with that. Um, of course, JMR is still leaps and bounds ahead, but uh, Fubica has really stepped it up, and it makes it a channel that... I really think is a great secondary Marvel sports channel. I do. I think I I would even if I didn't comment for Glasscar, I would watch Glasscar. I don't know if I would have watched Marvel Circuits if I wasn't commenting on it, but I would watch Glasscar. It really is uh, a high quality Marvel sports um, production. How so, many episodes um, around two? Uh, one. Uh, one. Well, right. two. One qualifiers and then one race. But uh, okay. Um, yeah. I might as well just check and them I, out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I recommend anyone who hasn't checked out that particular series to check it out. I think it's a, I think it's definitely a step up for Fubeka. Um, one other thing, I think the the whole the whole race went pretty well. Um, a lot of interesting movements um, with the marbles and and, and and Nitro getting his first victory is very surprising, um, especially since his background was randomly decided to be one of speed and his name was randomly chosen. Then he happened to win the first event. It was really it was really funny actually how it worked out, but. Um, I don't know. It went very well, and we're definitely going to touch more on each of the individual competitors in the next uh, episode. We'll get to talk about both race one and race two. Um, but, Waf, if you have anything um, about Glass Car you want to mention, and now is the time because then we're going to have to close out for today. Uh, yeah, so like, I love the speed of the of the launcher. Like it really, it felt really fast. Like I guess my, my main complaint was that like because of all the uh, the chevrons. It really slow, especially near the, the shortly after the the launcher. It's it t- stole a lot of that momentum, and so it it became very slow and it wasn't as fun to watch. Like after that, I point, guess like, Chevron's yeah, that's what yeah, it's and about, like yeah. also like, they, they took up like an entire lane. Like it wasn't like me like half or of a lane. Like, it was an entire I know. Like, it's, like one third of the course of would be a Chevron, and then, like then the, the Chevrons leading into the launcher, like they weren't even like it was kind of strange how like, it was like, layered. And if you watch like some of the marbles hitting the right one, it's kind of loose. So it wasn't like really like secure to the whole right side. So like, I like I think the launcher is easily better than the the elevator, hands down. And I pref- and I hope that JMR does that for Marbula One next year because man, it really keeps it much more engaging than an elevator. But I th- like it's important. It is important to keep in mind like the, uh, like the, the track design so it doesn't like take away from too much from the speed and the. I have heard some people complain about like it's, like, maybe it's like it's too powerful and so like the, like maybe like ha- like doing reducing the power like reducing so you don't need a, as big of a ramp, which and like which could be interesting and like, you know it will it all depends I suppose but personally I I like as long as like is the. I. I th- I think I like I'm personally okay with the, how strong it is now. I just like I would prefer if the track wasn't designed to take so much of that speed away. Um, you said a lot of very interesting things there. First off, um, I absolutely agree that the Chevrons were damp in the race, and so do about fifty percent of the Fubeca fans. If you look through the first video, fifty percent of the comments were like, "Dude." Fix those chevrons right now. One guy was literally like, I will unsubscribe if the next track is not better. Um, and I 100% agree. I 100% agree. Uh, the, the race got a little dry here and there because every time they would shoot up with a ton of speed from the propulsion system, which is like the biggest... The, the, you, you think Marbula 1's a revolution. That particular piece of engineering to me is the most notable thing that's happened in marble sports this year. I know you like, we're gonna, you'd like you want to talk about... Well, I mean, I guess Gel gaining 500,000 subscribers in two months is probably the most notable thing, to be honest. I mean, like that, that is that. But besides that, besides that crazy... Um, jump that they've made the second most notable thing is the engineering of that propulsion system but it was really dampened by those chevrons and it will be fixed i'm pretty sure fubica uh, is aware of all those comments um, and, he, and he has he has said to me that it's going to be altered because really uh he needs to do that like now um and he will so i'm i think that's going to be taken care of as well um but Here's the thing. I don't think, unfortunately, that that particular style will work in Marbula 1 um, or even in Marble Circuits. And the reason I think that is because that those tracks are a lot bigger than than the tracks used in Marbula 1 and Marble Circuits. And the they take up a lot more space. So 
uh, in, and the marbles are bigger too. So if you try to put in the Marbula 1 into a small area, it really may get way too much speed and way too much craziness for like marble circuits and marbles really might be flying off a lot. I don't know. I just feel like it would be like, like in Marbula 1, the marbles didn't really move that fast most of the time. So, I mean, they would be moving super fast from that thing and then kind of slow down a lot. I don't know. I just feel like it wouldn't work super well. It would kind of be very opposition to what usually most of the racing in Marbula 1 is. And I feel like the elevator is done well enough on Marbula 1 that it works pretty well, actually. actually. Um, but yeah, and, and as far as a decrease in speed on that thing, I think for Glass Car, absolutely not, because Glass Car is such a big type of series with bigger tracks and marbles that the speed is good but yeah if you use it in marbula one or marble circuits you'd really have to decrease the speed on that you'd really have to decrease the distance and stuff because um to make sure that uh everything everything runs nice and smooth for the well, smaller marbles right. on the thinner track yeah well in my well if you ask me this i i also think it's not okay well <laughs> i'm completely new to this because i haven't even seen the, the any episode but i'll watch it today but i think it's not gonna work because well well, let's see. Well, let's think about it because Marvel One is based on what Formula One and Mark Glass Car is based on NASCAR. Basically, those are two completely different kinds of motorsport. Because exactly. Yeah, but of course, I'm talking about the real motorsport. But yeah, we do have to keep in mind that basically NASCAR is Mark Glass Car, which NASCAR basically is about stock cars, and you know, and Marvel One, and uh, which is form Formula One is based on. Uh, Formula One, which is basically really custom made, you know, cars designed to go as fast as possible. So, yeah, it wouldn't really make sense. It just, it would not, it's not going to work, really. Hmm. I agree that there are definitely some precautions in that. I don't, I don't think it would work either, but, and definitely they are different racing. So, like, you got to kind of separate them somehow. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what else, we'll see what, maybe there's some, some new engineering that would even blow that out of the water. I don't know. I think Marble Sports engineering is, is, that's one of my favorite things I'd love to see in the future. That's something um, something I want to do in the future because um, I'm going to be an engineer. I want to actually do engineering in marble sports. That I would like, be so fun. I want to get a degree so. in marble sports engineering. <laughs> no, but like turn my degree in engineering into something to actually work with marble sports because marble sports is something where you have to do all the work kind of thing to make the marbles do their thing. So a lot of engineering and um, very specialized and careful engineering would be very, very incredible to keep that moving very smoothly so um i i, I something i really want to get involved in at some point so um but yeah and anyway that that's all for today we are way over time on the the bulk of the episode we did have a short intro so it's probably going to come to about the same maybe a little bit longer but there was so much to cover and we haven't even covered it all um i want to know guys what are your predictions uh, comment them below or whatever um for marble league and for glass car um for glass car I like to say, I have to say super unbiased, but I'm the announcer. But I honestly think we haven't seen the last of Volcano or Nitro. They're going to be there at the top the whole season. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, thank you, Steve, for coming on. It's always a pleasure to have you on. It's you know, great to you, have seem, you, back. you seem very knowledgeable in the world of marble sports, and it's certainly always a pleasure to well, um, well, I just don't uh, have bring up the knowledge. Except there's just have nothing better to do than just watch marble sports all day. So yeah. Hey, there you go, right? I mean, is there anything better to do ever, right? Um, <laughs> Marble Sports is the best, man. Yep, the best. exactly. Exactly. All right, Waff, do your ending thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Roll on, Marble Sports fans. <laughs>